Hi, it's Colleen with Rope and Resellers, and I'm here for a weekly sales update on eBay for August 14th through the 20th, 2017. Okay, so first up, I sold this Mom Cat B. Cleban shirt for $14.99. It cost me $1 at the bins in Burlingame, and it was $4.87. That includes all my shipping, eBay, and PayPal fees for a total profit of $9. 12 cents and that sold the very day I I mean within an hour or two I don't know why there were other mom cat ones up there this is a uh, pretty old as far as I'm concerned because um, it was in my store forever this is my son modeling it it's a descent green ski snowboard suit uh, it's very 80s or 90s it was anyway it was it was pretty funny I got it at an auction local auction Anyway, I had my son model it. Uh, I had it up for a really long time for $129.99. I thought it was just really retro cool. Uh, someone finally bought it. They were from Germany. They bought it for $52. They paid the shipping $84.78. And uh, it was about $2 because I had a whole lot of old jackets and ski suits and stuff. And everything else is sold. This was the last thing out of that. Since it was going to Germany, they paid quite a bit in shipping but it wasn't quite enough so I actually ended up pitching in about ten dollars which means my profits were a little bit less than I had hoped so 51.83 in shipping PayPal and eBay fees for total profit of thirty dollars ninety five cents it's out of here it took three years to sell bye bye this is a vintage mug or towel hanger I think people use them or coat rack it's expandable. You find them all the time. They're, they're usually relatively cheap. People don't usually want to charge. I, I got $19.99 for this uh, with free shipping. I paid $0.50 cents for it at an estate sale. Six oh three in fees and shipping for total profit of thirteen forty six, And it took three months to sell. A girl's lot. I went through my daughter's clothes uh, a while ago. These are actually quite a while ago we went through again I go oh, yeah that's right I still have some stuff from when she was four um no there she was five six anyway she's older a lot older than that now I'm embarrassed to say anyway I just list these there are some boutique brands from a little while ago my other daughter actually wore them first I sold it for $12.99 with free shipping it didn't cost me anything because it came out of the closet Seven sixty-two for shipping and fees for a total profit of five dollars thirty-seven cents, and that only took a week to sell. Uh, I don't think some of this stuff is not as popular as it used to be. Uh, Greggy Girl is kind of the higher-end brand, which is what this is. They're usually matching. I don't think boutique clothes are as big a deal as they were when my girls were little. Anyway, I'm grateful it's out of here. Uh, vintage patch. I picked these up a couple. Of a couple years ago at an estate sale. It's just sort of one of those pipeline things. Paid 25 cents for it. It sold for $9.99. Oh, I paid 10 cents for it. Uh, $4.11 for shipping and fees for a total profit of $5.78. It took 18 months to sell. Two Starbucks mugs. I had a lot of stuff on sale for 60% off. This might have been one of them or not. Probably not. But it has been in my store for a while. Someone offered me $7.99, which is more than fair. They paid the shipping, so I collected $15.85 from them. This is just a set of Starbucks mugs, and this is something from when I picked up. And like the picture doesn't even show that th there were two of them. So he got two of them, and he may not even he may not have even noticed that unless he really read the title carefully. I paid a dollar for these at a Goodwill. Nine eighty-three in shipping and fees for a total profit of five dollars two cents. It took four and a half years. That sat in there way too long. I wouldn't give up on them though. There was other things I pulled and I kept those in for some reason. Anyway, this is out of a lot from an auction. They're they're called honeycomb. They're made out of paper. They were super delicate, really old. I said as is. They knew that they were getting something that was practically falling apart but people love them or they restore them. I don't know what they do with them. Anyway, I got $9.29. 50 cents is what it cost me out of that auction lot for 19 for shipping and fees for a total profit of $4.60, and they took four months to sell. 
Here's some uh, video games. I don't usually do a lot of video games just because they don't bring in very much money. And I don't, I don't know. They were games I bought for a lot for my son, and these are games that he didn't really have any interest in, so I sold them. $13.94 is what I got. $2, so I paid a buck a piece for them. $5.44 shipping and fees for a total profit of $6.50. And they took nine months to sell. Billy Blues. This came out of the consignment bag that I paid $10 total for. They're black corduroy pants, size 10, which I guess is a pretty good size. $18.59 is what I got uh, with free shipping. I paid a dollar about uh, $8.29 for shipping and fees for a total profit of $9.00. 30 cents and they only took a month to sell. Here's another old thing that I had sitting around in a bin. It's a Dankin Fru Fru Nature Baby. I had one of these when I was a kid. I picked it up at a garage sale ages ago for probably 50 cents. They paid $17.59 for the item and a total of $21.02 because I charged for shipping. 50 cents from the garage sale, 661 shipping and fees for a total profit of 1391. See this old Dankin tag, and that took four years to sell. So I won't buy those again. This is another lot that came out of my youngest closet. This is a really cute little outfit that I had. This was actually the first outfit my older daughter wore to kindergarten. It did have a stain. I disclosed that. Took pictures. It sold for twenty-three twenty-four. It didn't cost me anything. Nine dollars fifteen cents to ship and fees for a total profit of fourteen dollars nine cents, and that took about a week to sell. It was super cute and very versatile. So I'm lucky. This was a surprise because it was trashed, and I thought I had something special. I bought it at an estate sale. And it had a lot of stains and it had some burn marks or wear marks or something. Um, and I disclosed all that. I wrote it in the description. There was some more um, stains over here, which I I showed them. Anyway, $39.99, it went to Japan. So they paid $49.99 total. $5 is what I paid for it at the estate sale. It was wool, so I don't know, maybe... Southwestern or Indian Native American stuff is is popular there. It was hand woven. Uh, fifteen forty nine in shipping and fees for a total profit of twenty nine fifty, and that only took one day to sell. And it was one of those funky things where it goes to California and then they ship it to Japan, and you just have to put the item number on the outside. I've sold quite a few things that way. It's like their own global shipping program. It's kind of cool. Anyway. Next was a Burberry London Brown Novacek. So Novacek is this check right here. If you ever see that in the thrift store, be very careful. This is copied quite a bit, but um, that means it's Burberry, which is money. Thirty-two fifty-four. I paid shipping. I paid a dollar for this in the bins in California. Uh, Eight dollars ten cents for shipping and fees for a total profit of twenty-three forty-four, and that only took six days to sell. Now this, a gentleman kept, he's, he, he's what you would call a, a high need customer. He asked me the size of the, if it had pockets, uh, some other measurements, how long it was. Um, these aren't super great pictures, so I didn't really totally fault him for that. And after I was done measuring a couple different things and a couple different uh, emails back and forth through eBay, he finally offered me 15 and I declined him the first time, and then just like a week ago, he asked me again. And I sent him an offer, and I never heard back from him. So then I see that this sold, and it's the same guy that had been we had been corresponding back and forth. So it says I sold it for eighteen fifty nine, but I actually ended up refunding him the three dollars and fifty nine cents through PayPal, and just told him that I was going to honor the fifteen dollars because I'm just like that. Uh, I paid 75 cents for this at a rummage sale. $5.31 for shipping and fees for a total profit of $8.94, and it took three months to sell. This 
uh, is TrueGether. So I did sell something on TrueGether. This is an avalanche beacon uh, used for backcountry access and skiing. I was on patrol. We use these all the time. They're great. They're super fast. There are more modern versions, so they aren't worth quite what they used to be, but they're still very handy. They're kind of nice because they show you, show you direction and how far it is. Anyway, it's uh, made by Backcountry Access. I picked it up at uh, Goodwill. I sold it for $142.49. And so it says $149.99, but actually they give people on TrueGather a discount. I don't have that set up that way anymore. I finally figured out how to go in because I had it where if you bought it, it was 5% off. I'm not doing that anymore because I'm losing money on this platform. Uh, so $142.49. It cost me $5.00. I don't think they knew what they had at the Goodwill. Fourteen twenty-seven for shipping and fees for a total profit of one twenty-three twenty-two. It took one day to sell, and that is what saved my week. All right, so looking at the numbers, uh, I made four hundred and thirty fifty-nine uh, in item goods. Total cost of goods that received money received. 484.69. Sorry, I'm no accountant. Twenty dollars thirty-five cents is what I paid for everything, so that's pretty pretty good. Uh, fairly inexpensive cost of goods. One hundred and sixty-one fourteen for shipping and fees for total profit from eBay and TrueGether. Three hundred three dollars and twenty cents. I did sell eleven shirts on Merch, so sixty-three fifty-three for a total e-commerce of. 366.73. So that's much better. That would be great if I could make that kind of money every week. So yay, finally making some money. Pretty happy. Looking forward to uh, that being a normal thing rather than just eking by, barely making my weekly goal. But I have to say that things are starting to look up. So hopefully they are for you too. My tip this week is uh, actually I just wanted to use an example of something that I photographed this week and I was doing some research and I thought, hey, maybe people would like to see how I researched it. So I did a little clip. I'll show you the thing that I picked up. So I picked this up at the bins. It's, um, the lighting is not super great, but it's just a, um, it's a marmot. It's a brand jacket and it's, uh, it's just a rain jacket, a simple little raincoat that I picked up at the bins for probably a buck. I was just going to go through and show you how I research what price to sell it at and why. Okay, so looking through, I searched marmot, jacket, rain, purple, women's. Just to sort of narrow it down and make it easier for myself. I'm looking at used, so the condition is used. Uh, I'm looking at sold listings. And so that, that's pretty close. Um, and you can see here these two little radio buttons tell you that you have used and sold. So I'm looking through that sold for less than 70, but more than 48. Um, that one sold for less than 48, but more than 36. Here's one for 29. So there were 15 total. And the most one of these sold for was like 50 and mine doesn't really look like that. So mine looks more kind of like this. So I'm going to guess like in the 35, actually, I think it's exactly that one. So someone sold it for 30 plus they charge shipping. I usually like to do free shipping because I don't think this is going to even go flat rate. Um, it's probably going to be first class. If I want to sell it really fast, I could sell it for 19 and charge shipping. It'd be gone tomorrow. I like to shoot for a little higher. I do have this um, top rated plus little uh, badge on my listings and I want to believe that, that could maybe get me a higher price. And if you look up here, the higher priced ones are a lot of them are top rated. So anyway, I'm going to list mine th for $34.99. I feel pretty good about that. I only paid a dollar. So then I'm going to go to um, the final fee calculator and um, this is, it's called Final Fee Calc. And I put in what I sold it for. I'm not charging any shipping. I'm guessing that it's gonna go in a flat rate envelope. It cost me a dollar at the bins. Do I have a store? Yes. 
categories. So here's the other choices I can have, but it is not any of those because it's clothing and I'm a top rated seller and it is going to tell me that I'm going to pay $1.32 in PayPal fees and $2.88 in eBay fees. Now, if I want to play around with this and I thought the other direction and I thought I really want $25 out of this jacket, then I can just change the numbers up here to 37 and see what happens. I get more than enough. Um, or I can do 36 and see what happens. That's pretty close. So maybe I ask $36, then I know my total profit's going to be 25 and that's how I look things up. So I don't research the price like that every single time. A lot of times I'm just trying to go through really fast and just get it done because the more you list, the more you sell, and I don't have time to really negotiate all that. But I just wanted to show you some of the tricks and tools. I also look at... Uh, so if it was 15 that were sold, then I would unclick that one little radio button that said sold. And uh, so then I could see what's actually listed and how many are listed. So if there's 15 that's sold and only less than 15 or close to 15 that are actively listed right now, then I know that's probably a pretty good turnover rate. If there's 147 listed, then I know that I'm going to be waiting a while to sell that item and maybe I want to consider on the lower end of the price so that I'm competitive. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. You can like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.